Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my Me Made knitwear collection, as well as my best tips for getting started with knitting. I do want to start this video out by saying I'm in no way a knitting expert. It's just a really fun hobby for me and I often get asked if I'm going to be sharing any knitting tutorials in the future. And the answer to that is a pretty firm no. I'm left-handed and apparently I knit really strangely and honestly I would just confuse you. And there are already so many amazing knitting tutorials and knitting channels out there. So yeah, this video is more of a look at my knitting journey so far as well as some of the tips and tricks I've picked up along the way that are going to be perfect if you're wanting to start knitting some beautiful pieces for your wardrobe too. So far I have made four pieces for my wardrobe but these are just what I've made for my wardrobe myself. Um, I'm very lucky to have a mum who is an extremely talented knitter and she often makes me beautiful pieces for my wardrobe as well and I have made these pieces since I really got into knitting at the end of 2019 early 2020 um, and I basically haven't stopped since so these are the pieces I have made for my wardrobe so far. This first piece I'm going to show you is honestly the one I am most proud of. It's the first time I ever had a go at knitting a kind of lacy pattern. Up until this point I had only done basic knitting, I hadn't done patterns of any kind. I had made a few jumpers in the past but they were all very simple. I had a look through my mum's knitting pattern stash and found this vintage knitting pattern that I just fell in love with. It's this almost scalloped lacy pattern that is just oh it's so beautiful. The pattern book itself had this particular jumper like knitted in stripes so it was really hard to see what the pattern kind of would look like plain um, but I decided to just have a go at it in one colour and I'm so glad I did because it turned out so much better than I ever thought it would. And then after I shared me making this jumper, I got asked by so many of you if I could share the pattern. So I got in touch with the original publishers of the pattern. I think it was published in the 80s and they kindly gave me permission to share the pattern. So I'll have a link to that down below if you want to have a go at making a jumper like this for your own wardrobe. I thought I would also share how long each of these pieces took to make. I would say from memory this one took me about six months to make. Definitely a very lengthy project but I enjoyed every single minute of it. Next up I have this incredible popcorn cardigan. This cardigan was heavily inspired by the brand Misher & Puff. They're a knitwear company that make the most beautiful pieces, um, one of which is a kind of popcorn cardigan like this. And this piece also took me a very long time to knit. Again, it was at least six months, but I am obsessed with how this turned out. I think it is such an easy cardigan to wear. It's again, just got that little bit of interesting detail to it. So it's not just a plain cardigan. It kind of makes any outfit really interesting and I'm in love with the color of it as well and I'll be sure to leave a link to the yarn I use down below. I'll try to leave all of the yarns I've used down below so you can go check them out if you're interested. But yeah, this one is definitely my favorite hand knitted piece I've made for my wardrobe so far. Next I have this beautiful, somewhat chunky cream cardigan. It is so, um, textured. It feels really soft and spongy and it's just such a fun cardigan to wear. This pattern is by the Knit Pearl Girl which again I'll have a link to down below and I am so obsessed with how this one turned out. Again it is such a simple stitch but it's just something a little bit different and just adds a little bit more of an interesting detail compared to just a plain knitted cardigan and I'm just completely obsessed with the sleeves of this one. They are so puffy and I just feel like this cardigan is so lovely to wear. It almost feels like you've just thrown a blanket over yourself. And this project was actually pretty quick to make. From memory, I think it only took me about three months to knit up. And by the way, when I say three months, it's not three months of solid knitting every day. I would only probably pick up my knitting for an hour every day maximum. Sometimes it's only for five minutes. Sometimes it's while I'm waiting in a waiting room. It's just something I pick up and work a little bit on most days if that makes sense but yes this one is such a good addition to my wardrobe and I feel like I wear this one the most just because it's so easy to wear and it goes with everything I own and this last piece is actually the first hand knitted item I made since getting into knitting in a big way a couple of years ago this cardigan is super chunky 
and it's made from this beautiful cinnamon colored yarn. This was actually a knitting kit by the brand Wool and the Gang. I purchased it with my own money when I was first getting back into knitting. And honestly, it was the perfect project to get me hooked on knitting again. Because the wool is so chunky and thick, it was really quick to knit up. So it felt really satisfying. And because it came as part of a kit, it was really easy to follow along the pattern. And I will talk about this in a little bit more detail in a minute, but I find knitting kits are the perfect project for beginners because they provide everything for you so everything you need for the project you will get given in the kit. So I made this at the end of 2019 and I took this with me and wore it all over Japan when I went there in very early 2020 and it is holding up pretty well. I have to say it is peeling a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, you can probably see that there. It's no big deal. I don't mind that much. It kind of just adds to the overall texture of it. But yeah, that is something to keep in mind if you're using really soft yarn like this. But yeah, I am so in love with this piece. And again, it just feels like wearing a massive blanket, which is basically all I want in my knitwear. So that's everything I've made for my wardrobe myself so far. At the moment, I'm working on another cardigan that, that is a We Are Knitters knitting kit um, which was kindly sent to me and I'm having so much fun with that again it's got like a kind of interesting stitch but it's not just plain knitting so it's definitely keeping me entertained so now that I've shown you some knitting inspiration let me share some of my best tips for getting into knitting I actually asked over on Instagram whether you had any questions on knitting and a lot of the same topics kept coming up so I'm going to try and cover them as best as I can in this part of the video so by far the most asked topic was best projects or resources for complete beginners the first thing you want to learn is to do a plain garter stitch that is the most basic form of knitting I guess you could say and definitely the best place to start I recommend grabbing some yarn and some knitting needles and just doing a few rows of garter stitches um, with no project in mind just knit over and over until you perfect the garter stitch once you've perfected the garter stitch you can go on to purl stitching which is just a more I guess refined basic stitch purl stitching is very similar to garter stitching, um, it just creates a different look. And again, once you've perfected garter stitch, I would do the same with purl stitch, just do multiple rows until you've completely perfected it. Once you've perfected both of those stitches, the best projects to work on are obviously a scarf, just a plain knitted scarf, because that way you can practice keeping the rows straight. And again, it's very repetitive. By the time you've finished a full scarf, you will have definitely perfected the garter stitch or the purl stitch. You could instead make multiple squares in different colors and then create a really beautiful hand knitted blanket. Once you've kind of perfected those stitches and you wanna start looking into making some items for your wardrobe, as I mentioned, I definitely recommend you check out some knitting kits. My favorites are Wool and the Gang and We Are Knitters. They're the two I've tried, but there's also an Australian one called Cardigang Knits, which is one I really want to try next. They all kind of have varying levels of difficulty, so you can choose beginner kits or advanced kits. And honestly, this cardigan that I made is basically just a whole heap of rectangles that you then stitch together, but they do cover different techniques such as the ribbing, which is kind of this bit here, and other bits and pieces like that that are kind of needed for all hand knitted garments. But yeah, definitely a chunky cardigan like that would be a great project for a beginner. And like I said, the kits come with everything. So if you have no idea what materials you need, you don't have to worry about that because they provide everything. I was also getting asked a lot about different techniques such as casting on, casting off, picking up drop stitches, sewing all the different knitted elements together to create the garment, all of those kind of technical things that you need to know in order to be able to knit a garment. And my best resource that I found for this, and I'm sure there are others out there, but my favorite is the Wool and the Gang YouTube channel. They have a video on just about any technique you will ever need and their videos are so detailed and clear and perfect if you just need a visual guide on how to do all these different techniques and I was also asked a lot about the abbreviations in patterns and the fact that knitting patterns are basically a different language which is 100% true basically in a knitting pattern everything is abbreviated and 
all I do to find out what the abbreviation means if there isn't a glossary with the pattern is just Google it. Just put the abbreviation into Google and maybe follow it with the word knitting and the correct term is sure to pop up. And then what I do is just take that correct term and then put it in the Wool and the Gang YouTube channel and there'll be a video about it, trust me. So the next topic I got asked about a lot was what do I need to get started? Genuinely, all you need to get started are some knitting needles and some yarn, but some other things that I have that I find really helpful are a crochet hook. When you do drop a stitch, I find a crochet hook is the easiest thing to like pick the stitch up with. I also have a couple of yarn and tapestry needles handy. I also use a row counter a lot, especially if you're knitting something with a bit of a pattern and you need to keep tabs on the amount of rows you've done. I just put a little row counter at the end of my needle. You can get row counter apps, which I have used in the past, but I find actually having the row counter on my needle is a really good visual reminder to add my row to the counter. And I find if I use the app, I just forget to do it. And then I've forgotten how many rows I've done. And something else you'll need if you're using a pattern are some stitch markers. Let me know if there are any other essentials that I've missed in the comments because yeah, like I said, I'm no expert. These are just what I tend to use the most and I can't say I have anything else that I've used yet. Um, but if there's anything I have forgotten, please, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Next, I thought I would talk about where I purchased my yarn because I did have a lot of questions asking about that as well. I personally only like to use either 100% cotton or 100% wool. You can buy acrylic yarn, which is definitely a more affordable option, but it's not very good for the planet. In saying that, acrylic does last a long time. So if you are to make a garment from acrylic, it will last a lot longer than wool because wool biodegrades. And I personally just don't love the feel of acrylic yarn either as I'm knitting it. It's just not very soft. Like I said, it is affordable though. And if you are just starting out, that can be important. So I recommend trying and seeing if you can get your hands on some second hand yarn um, because that way you'll bring the price down a little bit and it won't matter if you're just beginning and making mistakes because yeah 100% wool is very expensive worth it but when you're just starting out you may not want to fork out that amount of money I tend to purchase most of my yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is situated in Bendigo, Victoria. The size of their balls of yarn are just a lot bigger than you buy at Spotlight or other wool stores. And therefore, because you're buying a little bit more in bulk, it brings the price down a little bit. They also have so many beautiful colors to choose from as well. And the quality is exceptional. One tip I will give you for purchasing yarn is to always make sure you buy from the same color lot. So if you're making an item of clothing especially and you need quite a few balls of yarn, sometimes even though they look the same color, they might be slightly different if they're made from a different color or dye lot. So I always like to check the barcode to make sure that the dye lot is the same um, and that way you know that the color is going to be consistent throughout your make. Another topic that was highly requested was how to keep your tension correct. I have not much advice to give on this um, because for me, it was just a ton of practice. Eventually you get the hang of what feels normal and what doesn't. The best advice I can give is just to not knit tightly. If it's tight, it's just gonna be horrible and uncomfortable to knit. You can knit in a continental style, it's called, which I personally don't do because it just doesn't come naturally to me. Knitting continental kind of just means you use your hands more than the knitting needles, I think. You can kind of thread the yarn through your fingers in a way that makes knitting a lot quicker, but it also keeps the tension the same as you knit. I have never been able to master it. I do my own kind of version of Continental, which kind of slows me down more than it speeds me up, if I'm honest. But that is definitely something you should look into if you're having trouble keeping your tension consistent. But yeah, sorry I don't have much more advice than that. I definitely think practice comes into it. Um, and once you know what feels right, you will know. And I guess the last piece of advice I have to share is if you don't have the patience for knitting, try crochet out instead. Crochet is very similar to knitting. It does have a bit of a different overall look. Knitting definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. And like I said, most of my knitting projects take a good six months or so to complete, which is exactly what I love. I love the fact that I can get away with nearly only having 
two knitting projects per year. Knitting isn't something I want to do quickly. It's something I do love to take my time with. But if you just can't even fathom that and if you have no desire to knit something for that long, but you do want to start a really cute, cozy project, crochet will definitely be the one for you. Crochet does take a bit of time to get used to, but once you've got the hang of it, it is so quick and so easy. And I feel like it is definitely more forgiving as well. If you make a mistake, you can easily unravel it and not destroy your whole project. There's also some really fun different patterns you can try as well and you can definitely be a bit more experimental with crochet. So in that way it is a very satisfying craft to try. I recommend having a look at the different types of granny squares you can crochet. When I was a teenager I would just constantly crochet granny square blankets um, and just do all the different types of granny squares. There's just so much variety and yeah so many different things you can do with them. But yeah that is all the advice I kind of have to give you for getting started with knitting. If you have any other questions, leave them down in the description below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. And if there's anything I forgot or anything I've accidentally missed and haven't covered, please let me know and I will again try to add more resources to the description of this video so you can come back to it as a kind of like hub for all the different resources. This was definitely a very different video for me talking about knitting instead of sewing for a change but I hope you enjoyed it and found it inspiring and I hope you're feeling a little bit more confident to give knitting a try. If you enjoyed this video then I would love it if you could give it a like and come and find me on Instagram if you'd like to see some of the knitting projects I'm working on. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching. Thank you.